Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about redox reactions. This is a really important class of reactions because they're at the heart of all the batteries we use in everyday life. So the batteries in your smartphone, the batteries in your car, all use redox reactions. Why is that? Well, redox reactions are really about the transfer of electrons. So in this reaction below where you see iron combining with oxygen, there's actually electrons being transferred between oxygen and iron. And batteries can harness the transfer of electrons in reactions like this to create a current and run our everyday devices. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna use chemistry terms to describe the transfer of electrons in these reactions. And so that's part of the challenging part of redox reactions is getting a handle on all the different terms we use to describe the flow of electrons. So some of the terms we're gonna use are like reduced, oxidized, reduction agent, oxidation agent. And I'm gonna introduce these terms slide by slide and give you a chance to become familiar with them. First though, let's just think about the flow of electrons. So let's forget about all these different words and let's just talk about where the electrons are actually going and then we'll build up to thinking about what it means to be reduced or oxidized, et cetera. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a look at the same reaction, combining iron with oxygen to make iron oxide. And what we wanna think about is what element in this reaction gains electrons and what element in this reaction loses electrons. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna look at the oxidation state of iron and oxygen, both before and after the reaction. So it's important that you know how to determine the oxidation state of elements. If you don't know how to do that, I suggest that you go ahead and watch determining oxidation states before you continue with this video. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Well, if I look at iron and oxygen before, right, on my reactant side, then I have iron all by itself. And whenever I have an element that's all by itself, that's not an ion, that means that I have an oxidation state of zero. So before the reaction, my iron has an oxidation state of zero. My oxygen, similarly, all by itself and not an ion. So it has an oxidation state of zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the oxidation state before, which I've just done. And now I'm gonna look at the oxidation state after the reaction on my reactant side. And here we see that I have iron oxide and I know I can assign the oxidation state to oxygen as minus two. And again, if you're not sure how to do that, watch the determining oxidation states video before you continue. So since oxygen's minus two, and that's a neutral compound, I know that my iron must be plus two. So I've determined the oxidation state then on iron and oxygen after the fact, and iron is plus two, and oxygen is minus two. And now you'll start to see why oxidation states are important. Because what we've actually done here is looked at how electrons have moved between elements before and after a reaction. So you'll notice that iron went from zero to plus two. So if something goes from zero to plus two, that means that it's losing electrons. So in this case, iron loses electrons. So iron lost electrons because its oxidation state increased. So anytime an oxidation state increases, you know that's the loss of electrons. And that can be a little tricky because you see it go from zero to plus two. So you think, oh, that's positive, that's gaining something. But that's actually not the case because electrons are negatively charged. So I've taken two things that are negatively charged from iron and that gives me a plus two charge. Similarly, oxygen went from zero to minus two. It's getting more negative. And that means that oxygen is gaining electrons. So oxygen's gaining electrons because its oxidation state is being reduced. So in this reaction, where you have iron reacting with oxygen, the electrons are flowing from iron to oxygen. And that's really the core part of redox reactions is thinking about how those electrons flow. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce some specific terms we use in chemistry to describe this process. But what's fundamentally going on is the transfer of electrons. And that's what you need to keep in mind. The way we can follow the transfer of electrons is by determining the oxidation states before and after. And whenever the oxidation state increases, something's losing electrons. And whenever the oxidation state decreases, something is gaining electrons. So in this problem, we're gonna to start to use our technical words, reduced and oxidized to describe the flow of electrons. And the trick here is just to remember that oxidation or to be oxidized means that you're losing electrons. And that reduction or to be reduced means that you're gaining electrons. And an easy way to remember that is the phrase oil rig. Oil rig 
tells us in the word oil that oxidation is loss. And rig stands for reduction is gain. So whatever is gaining electrons is being reduced and whatever is losing electrons is being oxidized. And we already said in the last slide that iron is losing electrons. It's going from zero to plus two. So since it's losing electrons, that means it's oxidized. On the other hand, oxygen is gaining electrons. It's going from zero to minus two. So it's getting more negative because it's taken on a negatively charged electron. And that means that this guy, oxygen, is reduced. Okay, so those are two words we use to talk about the flow of electrons. If something's oxidized, that means it's giving up electrons. And if something's reduced, that means it's gaining electrons. And we can remember that with oil rig. All right, next set of technical words, reduction agent and oxidation agent. And here, what you should think about is if I say something's the oxidizing agent, it means that it's the thing that's causing oxidation. So what's causing oxidation? Well, it's the thing that's reduced. So let me explain what I mean. Oxygen is reduced, right? It goes from zero to negative two. So we already said that that's reduced. And because it's reduced, because it's gaining electrons, that means it's pulling electrons from something else. And that means it's causing the oxidation of something around it, namely in this case, iron. So oxygen is reduced, but it's the oxidizing agent. So something that is reduced is the oxidizing agent because it's causing the oxidation of something around it. Similarly, something that's oxidized, in this case iron, it's oxidized because it's giving up electrons, is the reducing agents. Because if it's giving up electrons, that means it's giving them to something around it, in this case oxygen. So our iron is, in this case, our reduction agent or our reducing agent. So you can see why part of the difficulty here is remembering these technical words. You have to remember what oxidation means, what reduction means, what oxidizing agent is, and what re reduction agent is. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning with a new reaction, and let's follow the flow of electrons, and let's label what's the oxidizing agent, what's the reducing agent, what's reduced, what's oxidized. Let's use all the terms we have. It'll take a little practice going through some redox problems on your own to get a hang of these words. All right, so in this case, we have a reaction where copper chloride is reacting with aluminum and going to copper and aluminum chloride. And we're gonna start the same way we did before. We're gonna determine the oxidation state of each element before and after. And what we're gonna do once we determine the oxidation state is we're gonna identify what's been reduced, that is what's gained electrons, and what's been oxidized, that is what lost electrons. So on the before side, First we have copper, and if we look at copper chloride, we can remember from our determining oxidation states video that we can assign chlorine an oxidation state of negative one. And since chlorine's negative one and there's two of them, that means that there's a total negative oxidation state of negative two on copper chloride, which means our copper must be plus two. Again, if that's tough for you to follow, go ahead and watch that determining oxidation state video. All right, so copper before is plus two, and chlorine is minus one. Now the last element we have is aluminum, which is zero. Why is it zero? Well, it's all by itself, and whenever you have an element all by itself that's not an ion, it has the oxidation state of zero. All right, now let's look at after. In this case, we have copper all by itself, so copper now is all by itself, which means it has an oxidation state of zero, just like aluminum did on the other side. Then we need to go to chlorine and aluminum, which are in our compound, aluminum chloride. And here we see, again, chlorine, which we know we can assign the oxidation state of minus one to, and there's three of those chlorines giving us a total negative oxidation state of minus three, so that means our aluminum must be plus three. So our chlorine's minus one and our aluminum is plus three. So now we've determined the oxidation state of each of our elements before and after our reaction. And we see that copper goes from an oxidation state of plus two to zero. Chlorine, on the other hand, stays the same. It goes from minus one to minus one. So it's not part of this electron transfer reaction. It's just hanging out, basically. 
Aluminum, on the other hand, goes from zero to plus three. So it's actually lost electrons. And so in these steps below, what we've done is we've already determined the oxidation state. And now we can look and we say elements that are becoming more negative have gained electrons. So which elements becoming more negative or less positive? In other words, copper, because copper goes from plus two to zero. So that means that copper is reduced because it's getting less positive in charge. And whatever is reduced is also our oxidizing agent. So copper is both reduced and our oxidizing agent. So we have copper, which is reduced in our oxidizing agent. That means it's gaining electrons. And since it's uh, gaining electrons, it's causing the oxidation of something else. On the other hand, the elements that are becoming more positive have lost electrons. And that means they're the reducing agent and that they're oxidized. So what's becoming more positive? Well, aluminum, because it's going from zero to plus three. So aluminum is oxidized. That is, it's going ahead and losing electrons. And since it's losing electrons, it's causing the reduction of something nearby it. So it's the reducing agent. Remember, you can remember what is reduced and what is oxidized by oil rig. So since we know that oxidation is lost, that means things that are losing electrons are oxidized. And we know that reduction is gained, so that means that things that are reduced are gaining electrons. So here we've labeled copper and aluminum with our technical terms. We've said that copper is reduced because its oxidation state decreases. That makes it the oxidizing agent because it's giving electrons or it's taking electrons from something around it causing something to be oxidized. Aluminum is oxidized because it's giving up electrons. And since it's giving up electrons, it's making something else more negative, And that makes it the reducing agent. So thanks for watching Real Chemistry. If you have any further questions about reduction and oxidation, please leave them below. Also subscribe to get updates about future Real Chemistry episodes or visit my channel to see other episodes that I have.